In this video, we'll be talking about the quantitative reasoning section of the university's clinical aptitude test. Hi and welcome back to the channel. My name's Dr. Ashley Hilton. As I've told you before, I'm a doctor, dentist, uh, UK medical school's admissions helper and tutor. And uh, in this university's clinical aptitude test series, we'll be going through each section and explaining each part of it. So that we'll go through questions, we'll explain the sections. And today is serving as an introductory video for the quantitative reasoning section. Just to give you a quick update, hands doing well. I went for an operation the other day, but then it was canceled last minute because they decided that it wasn't clinically appropriate to do. So I'm going for a review today just to decide whether that's still the case or they decide to change their mind, which often happens with uh, surgical cases. That means for the next three weeks at least, I'm permanently in this plastic heat molded splint. And um, it means because of that, I can't do clinical duties. So it means that I'm off work at the moment. But that in itself has provided some opportunities. I think people uh, have kind of wanted to pity me, but actually genuinely, I'm quite grateful that this happened because it means that I've had opportunities to focus on things that I didn't have time to do before. For example, making your more YouTube videos for you guys. I've been able to read and learn a lot more. And the final thing I've been doing actually is that I'm five days into a 10 day juice fast, uh, which I do, I've done for a variety of reasons. But if you'd like to know a little bit more about that, write in the comments below asking me and, and if I get enough requests, I'll make a video explaining exactly why I did it, how I did it, and what the amazing benefits are of doing a juice fast for such a long period of time. Again, there'll be lots of videos for this UCAT series. I'm also making a BMAT series at the moment. So if you're new to the channel, make sure it's really important that you subscribe and most importantly, turn on notifications so that you don't miss any of the videos. There'll be a lot, they'll be out of order, they'll be uh, released at various times. So it's really important that you capture all of them to get the entire picture of both the UCAT and the VMAT series to get everything right so that you can score the highest possible when it comes to test day. And that said, let's move on to the quantitative reasoning, which is what we're going to discuss today. Now, I'll put the UCAT official definition on the screen. But the main points from this subtest are that it assesses your numerical skills to solve problems. And note that the number skills required are similar to the level of somebody who does well in the GCSE. But it's important to note that it's more about problem solving than it is actually about the maths itself. And the reason they ask questions like this is because when you're a doctor, you will have to analyze data a lot and make inferences from that and be able to work out exactly what the numbers are saying. And if you're applying from abroad, the GCSE is a test that everybody sits at the age of 16. So don't worry too much because if you have done maths in your school, wherever you are up to the age of 16, the chances are that you will have learned the skills that you need for this test. And if you haven't done them, don't you worry about it because in the next few videos, we'll be taking all of them in turn and going through them in depth. So this quantitative reasoning section of the university's clinical aptitude test will be looking at a few things. The first is that it will look at your your ability to use mathematical skills to solve problems. It will give you numerical information in a variety of formats. And this can be just in written text or in the form of graphs, tables, charts, and all other forms of presenting data to you. And I really want to stress the most important thing is that if you have done maths in the past, this is not a pure maths test, and this isn't testing your actual mathematical skills. It needs you to use mathematical skills to then apply to your problem solving. So it's a set your problem solving skills. So please, if you've done maths before, do not underestimate this part of the exam. So the format of the quantitative reasoning section of the UCAT test is as follows. You get nine question stems and each of these question stems then has four questions. So that makes 36 questions in total. Every one of the 36 questions is multiple choice. And for each question, you have to choose from one of five possible answers. Each question stem has the information presented in a few possible formats. These are tables and graphs are by far the most common, charts and pie charts, diagrams, 2D and 3D shapes. Sometimes you just get a block of text from which you have to infer the data. And it's important to remember that each question stem will have 
all the information that you need for the following four questions. Now let's take a minute to talk a little bit about the timing of the quantitative reasoning section of the university's clinical aptitude test. What I really want you to know is that each section of the whole UCAT test is fixed timing. So you don't get to average your time out across all the different sections. You actually get fixed time per section. So if you don't finish that, then you have to move on. If you, if you finish early in the next section, you don't get, go, get to go back to the next section. So that's a really important thing to understand. Also, at the start of each section, same with the quantitative reasoning, you'll get one minute just to have a read of the instructions for the questions that are about to come. What you can't do is flick forward and look at the questions ahead of time, and you can't flick back either to look at the previous section to go through the questions that you've already attempted. So this is a great minute just to have a quick read of what's going on and take a breath, take the time to compose yourself and get yourself ready for the questions that are coming ahead. You might even want to take time to refresh your memory on some of the important equations that are coming up or things that you think will come up just to kind of get your mind ticking over and ready for the types of questions that you're about to attempt. So then you have 24 minutes to complete these 36 questions that are coming up, which works out at around 40 seconds per question. And compared to the other sections, this looks on paper like a walk in the park, but I promise you the whole UCAT test is time pressured. There are no easy sections, but this may feel slightly more relaxed. However, don't get lulled into a false sense of security because doing difficult maths questions and, and calculations under pressure uh, can be a lot more difficult than you think and time can go really quickly in this section. The question stems can either be quite short, but sometimes they can be very long. So you take quite a lot of time just for reading the question to start before you've even answered one of the questions. So let's have a look at some of the areas that are being tested in the quantitative reasoning of the university's clinical aptitude test. And I've done these in order of frequency. So the most common that you see in about a third of questions is basic arithmetic. This is such an important skill to have down and to practice, which we'll talk about shortly. Uh, about a quarter is percentages, about 10% is averages, and then the rest is distributed between ratios, decimals and fractions, common formulae and geometry. However, on top of all of these skills, the most important is the data interpretation that you will have to do from the question stems, where you use these uh, mathematical skills to extract that information and assess it correctly. This will then help you go on to answer the questions, obviously. As I keep stressing, this section is actually a problem solving section rather than a pure maths calculations test. This means that you have to use logic and reasoning throughout. Try not to get caught up on this because a lot of people know how to do the calculations beautifully, but they don't understand the logic or the reasoning or the context that the question is asking. And they make simple mistakes or, or slip ups uh, by knowing the numbers really well, but not actually understanding the logic behind what they're doing. But most importantly, you have to have these mathematical foundational skills down so that you can do them really quickly under pressure and you're not wasting time worrying about whether you're getting the maths right when you really need to be focusing on solving the problem. But don't worry, every mathematical skill that I discussed in this list, we will go through in detail with some practice questions so I can show you exactly how to do it at speed. Now we'll go on to look at some strategies and the general approach that you can use when attempting the quantitative reasoning section of the university clinical aptitude test. One of the first things that you need to do when you look at the question is work out whether the question actually needs you to do any calculations. What you might find is that there's a passage with lots of numbers in there that kind of can throw you a little bit. But when you come to answering and looking at the question, you can see that you can answer it from logic alone. If you can't answer it from logic alone, actually sometimes you will be able to eliminate some of the five questions just from looking at the answers and using your logic to work out whether they're actually viable to put down. Now, this is also another tactic you can use when you're a bit stumped as to the answer and you don't quite know how to work it out. This is because you'll find this uh, in this test, you'll find this in medical school. When you look at some of the answers, some of them just don't make any sense and clearly can't be right. So you can eliminate those straight away and that immediately either increases your chances if you're guessing or narrows down the, um, the amount of answers from which you have to work out which is the correct one. 
And obviously, if you're guessing, it improves your odds drastically from a one in five chance to maybe a one in two or a one in three. Then you need to look at if there are any time-saving tricks that you can do whilst doing the test. These are mainly having stuff like equations memorized, having really solid foundational math skills, and any rules that you can apply to quickly save time. One of them obviously being eliminating unlogical answers as we previously discussed. I know I keep banging on about this, but having really good arithmetic and math skills and practicing these throughout your preparation is gonna make such a big difference to your timing, to your confidence, and to how you answer the questions. So I think what we need to do now is perform a little bit of surgery. I want you to go and get a scalpel, get your hand, and we'll do a calculatorectomy. We will throw the calculator in the bin, and now we are going to ditch it and learn how to do calculations in our head practice them and make sure they're tight so that we can recall them quickly during the exam. I promise you that it'll be uncomfortable at first, but it is something that if you practice and honestly, once you just start doing bit by bit, you are gaining confidence and then you get more confident with doing it. And what's great is that you will feel confident about the calculations that you're doing in your head and be certain that they're right on test day. And all of this will just help speed you up and improve your performance massively. But that said, I will reluctantly quickly go through the calculator that you will get provided in your UCAT test. Now, Bear in mind that this is very basic and it's an on-screen calculator. I'll show you what it looks like here, but it's a very basic and archaic calculator that you have to use by either typing on the keyboard and make sure NumLock is turned on when you do that because sometimes people have panicked and thought that it doesn't work when actually you need to make sure the NumLock key is on. Or you can use your mouse. Now think how slow this is. Think how slow it must be opening up the page. You have to go to a different page, open and close it each time, entering the numbers, which is very slow, much slower than the calculator that you'll have at school. And then the fact that you're having to do all of this adds so much time to the time it takes for you to answer the questions. Think if you can do this quickly in your head, you'll save seconds, probably you know five seconds maybe per question. Over time, that adds up massively and helps you uh, dedicate a lot more time to the logic and the reasoning, which are the most important parts of these questions. And it's also important to note that these calculators have very limited functionality, plus, minus, divide, times, and I think they do a square root. But as I say, this isn't testing your math skills, it's testing your logic and reasoning. So it's not going to ask you to perform any complex equations on there, which means that most probably it's usually something that you can do in your head. It's worth noting that the calculator does have a memory function, which if you want to store a number, you can press M plus, and then if you want to retrieve that number for memory recall, you can press the button MRC. However, personally, I don't think it's that trustworthy. And remember that you will get provided kind of a, a laminated piece of paper with a, a marker pen that you can write stuff on and rub out. So it might be worth, if you have numbers that you wanna keep in your head, maybe just jotting them down on there, which is a lot more reliable. But the most important message to take away from this video is that it's really important now that we hone our basic math skills, especially in the six or so areas that I discussed above. But don't worry, the next few videos are going to go through each of these skills in turn and go through example questions so that you can strengthen them and feel really confident on test day that you can do them in your head without a calculator. And that's why it's really important that you subscribe below as I keep saying so that you don't miss any of these videos and turn on notifications so that you get alerted every time a new video comes out. So I hope this summary has got you orientated about how it's going to go for the quantitative reasoning section of the University of Clinical Aptitude Test. The next few videos will be going through each of those math skills and questions and tactics for how that you can score the highest. But the main takeaway I'd like you to go home with today is that it's time for you to start ditching the calculator and practicing mental arithmetic in your head so that you start building your confidence to do it without a calculator on test day. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment and like if you liked anything or I wanna ask any questions about it because I'm very active on here, especially at the moment with this, I can answer them straight away. And as always, please subscribe, share with your friends and do anything that you can to help support the channel so that I can keep going and keep making these videos to help you. As always, if you want any further training, go to futuredoc.co where you can get some practice tests, some more in-depth lectures that I do on these subjects and just 
general support to help you succeed and score as high as you can so that you can be one of the top ranking students when it comes to the university's clinical aptitude test. Thanks again and I'll see you in the next video. Quantitative, quantitative, quantitative. Aptitude test, it's aptitude, aptitude, aptitude test, aptitude test.